We're going to compare a couple of algebraic expressions to start off this video. Uh, this is something that a lot of times you'll get as a critical thinking element of something like an SAT type test or an AP test. And it's really just about problem solving and thinking outside the box a little bit. If we have uh, two expressions, for example, this one says x plus y and uh, 2x. And we need to be able to compare them. We would like to know which one is bigger. Is x plus y bigger or is 2x bigger? But before we can decide, we actually need to know the parameters uh, of x and y. So it says, suppose x and y give the populations of two cities. Okay, well, if it's the population of a city, we know that they both have to be positive. And it says x is bigger than y. And it says, can we determine which one of these is bigger? The two populations added together or multiplying the x population by 2? Well, in order for us to make some sense of that, let's just make up a couple of numbers that seem to fit this category of x being uh, bigger than y. I'm going to make up a simple number. I'm going to let x be 4 and I'm going to let y be 2. And the reason I did that is I can then represent these with numbers and I can make a determination about which one is bigger. And it does fit the bill of x bigger than y because 4 is bigger than 2. Let's take a look at what that would be worth. If x is 4 and y is 2, then x plus y would really be 4 plus 2. And 2x would be really 2 times 4. And now it's very easy to see which one is bigger. This is 6 and this is 8. So in all cases, 2x is going to be bigger. So uh, we're going to write that with an inequality symbol. x plus y is smaller than 2x. And I have proof. I gave you an example. Let's compare these. And I'm actually going to use the same numbers because they didn't give me any different parameters. They just said x has to be bigger than y. So x is 4, y is 2. So instead of saying x over y, I'm going to write 4 over 2. And I'm trying to compare that with y over x. Well, y over x would be 2 over 4. Let's simplify both of these. See, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 over 4 is 1 half. Can we determine which one is bigger? Absolutely. The 2 is bigger. This side is bigger, which means x over y is bigger. And so we'll write the final inequality. x over y is greater than y over x. So if you do this on your lesson or if you do it in your notes, pick up different pair of numbers if you wish, or you can use my uh, x is 4 and y is 2. But be sure to give an example when you want to justify your reason behind which one is bigger. Make sure we know. And you can see from my steps that I proved it. We're going to take a look at the last example of the lesson, which deals with this concept of sales tax. And we can use uh, sales tax and write uh, that in an algebraic form for buying any kind of an item. So let's take a look. We're going to buy an item and we're going to have to pay 6% sales tax. So the first thing we need to know is how much does it cost? So let's let the cost of the item be P. Let's just say we're going to pay for a price. And so when you go buy an item that we'll just call P, you don't just pay for the cost of the item. Sometimes, depending on where you are, you have to pay a different amount of sales tax. This problem has 6% sales tax. And so the first thing we need to know is we can't deal with algebra problems dealing with percents. We need to convert those to a decimal. The decimal form of 6% is 0 0.06. And this is how sales tax works. When you go buy an item at 6% sales tax, you pay for P, and then they add on 6% of the cost. And that's 0.06 times P. Now, a lot of times that dot wouldn't even look there. You might see it look something like this. P plus 0.06 P. Well, that's 1 P, and that's 0.06 P. And when I have a P and I have 0.06 P, what I'm really paying is this, 1.06p. So what if I'm going to buy a car and the car's sales tax rate is 8.5%? Well, we're going to have to take that 8.5% and 
and move the decimal back twice. And if you move it back twice, it's not 0.85, it's 0 0.085. So when you go by the cost of the car, the cost of the car, let's let it be P again. I'm gonna pay P plus, I'm gonna pay this amount here, which is 0 0.085 P. And if you pretend that there's a one in front of there, Sometimes we might see this represented and it looks something like a distributive property problem because I can take the coefficients. There's the coefficient and this coefficient. And uh, I'm going to factor those. Uh, I'm going to take out the P and I'm going to just leave the coefficients to be added. 1 plus 0 0.085. I took the P out of this term and I took the P out of that term and I put it right there. And if you take this and this, 1 and 0 0.085, those are now like terms, and you can just add them up. So we could also look at it like this, p times 1.085. And a lot of times we still take this as a coefficient and put it on the other side. So it becomes 1.085p. So I wanted to just throw the idea of a distributive property problem at you of this idea of factoring out a P and just being left with the coefficients, combining the terms of the coefficients and then rewriting it, but you'll notice that you still end up at the same similar style of answer. This one was 6% sales tax, and this right here was 8.5% uh, sales tax. I want you to feel supported when you come and talk about these higher order thinking questions. These are some of the harder problems that are in our lessons and I want you to feel like you can read them, we can understand them, and we can give it a best effort. Let's take a look at this one. A student is given the rectangle and the square. So obviously this is our rectangle and this is our square. Well, let's think about what do we know about a rectangle? We know that uh, a rectangle has 90 degree angles on all four corners and the opposite sides are congruent or they are the same. So if this is X, let's start filling in the things that we know. If this is x plus 4, down here is also x plus 4. What do we know about a square? Well, in a square, all four sides are equal. So if I were you, I would be labeling each of those sides x plus 2. And let's take a look at the question. The student states that the two figures have the same perimeter. Is the student correct? Explain your reasoning. Well, if they were going to have the same perimeter, then their algebra expressions would have to be equal. Because if I didn't end up with the same expression here as here, I only see one variable, it'd just be x. They'd have to be identical or else they wouldn't be the same. Uh, one way to do this would be to simply plug in a number for x, like let's say 2. Uh, this becomes 2 plus 4, this would be 6. This would be 6, this would be 2, this would be 2. And then since I said let's make x a 2, 2 plus 2 would be 4, 2 plus 2 would be 4, 2 plus 2 would be 4, 2 plus 2 would be 4. And if I took a look at the perimeter here, this would be 4, 4, 4, and 4. That would be 16. That's if I made it a numerical expression. Over here, this would be 6 and 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if x is 2, their perimeters are the same. I guess it would make sense then if I make x any value, their perimeters will be the same. But if I wanted to add up their expressions, which is more important in this problem, let's actually take a look at how to do it on one side, and then I'll let you do the other side on your own. Uh, this has sides of x and x. So I'm just going to add them up, x, x. And one of them was x plus 4, and the other one was x plus 4. We always want to add up our like terms. So notice I stacked all that together. How many x's do you see? I see 4x, and then I see plus 8. So take these four terms, stack them and add them up, and see if it's the same so that you can explain your reasoning, because that requires at least a good sentence. 